A very good afternoon to all of you. You are watching Urogynecology for Beginners and we are going to discuss a case today which is related to urogynecology. But this kind of case we have not discussed before. We have discussed various cases on fistula, incontinence, we have discussed in prolapse. prolapse. But yes. today we are going to discuss a case of voiding dysfunction. Voiding dysfunction. A lady who presented to us with voiding dysfunction. Yes. So Deera will be going to present that case and I'll be asking her questions. Sure ma'am. So uh, our, our lady, Mrs. X, 55 year old, residing at Golara Halli, she is a homemaker by occupation. She came to us with complaints of increased frequency of maturations in the last 10 days. She, her complaints started in the last 10 days and she had to void almost every half an hour. And every time she went to pass urine, it, she used to pass very small amounts of urine. Her, she had a very weak stream. Uh, she also complained of incomplete bladder emptying and she always felt the need to immediately revoid after, after passing urine. There was even a history of associated straining while passing urine. She had to strain or uh, use her abdominal muscle sometimes to pass urine. Okay. Yes, but there was no history of uh, any SUI, no history of associated urge incontinence, no history of any mask for vagina. So frequency you said she was having? Because she's feeling that she has to empty, right. complete empty. Right. But you have to differentiate that it was not urgency. Not urgency, yes ma'am. So this is a very important point, Deera, that a feeling of incomplete voiding for that she has to go again and again. But she's not having urgency right. or even pain. Right, neither pain. pain. Yes, no, no, pain. Okay. no burning intuition. So it wasn't even suggestive of UTI. UTI. Yes. Okay. Uh, no history of any abdominal pain or any abdominal mass. Uh, no history of any acute injury. Okay. Yes. So before this, uh, I just want to make one thing clear that any patient, okay, this is one of my favorite sentences, that any patient who comes with a transient or short history of urinary problems, yes. what is the first thing you should think? Short history of any, it can be leaking problem, it can be urgency, it can be pain, anything. Urinary complaints of short duration. Infection? Yes. Always and always rule out cystitis. Because whenever bladder and urethra are infected and inflamed, they can present with any of these symptoms, yes. including urgency, right. including SUI, SUI. including Voiding, pain, yes. voiding yes. dysfunction, yes. everything. Yes. So short history, first thing is that rule out cystitis. Yes. Um, I'm going ahead with the history. Uh, in her menstrual history, she attained menopause five years back. In her obstetric history, she's para for living for with last child about 30 years back. She's undergone, uh, uh, yes, all her vaginal deliveries. She's not been sterilized. In her past history, she has no associated medical disorders. That is, she's not she's not a known case of hypertension or diabetes. So I'm more interested in diabetes. Diabetes, yes. Because that can lead to recurrent cystitis right. of sugar. Yes. Control. The only history which she gives was a past surgical history of undergoing abdominal hysterectomy in oh, 2012. Hysterectomy also has been done in 2012. 12. That is 10 years ago. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, on examination, the patient is moderately built and nourished. Her BMI was 29 kg per meter square. Her uh, breast and thyroid were normal. Her gait was also normal. And uh, her uh, vitals were stable. Mm. CBS, RS were normal. On per abdomen, there was uh, suprapubic fullness. And just minimal tenderness which she had. So very important and I'm happy that you noted it. That she had fullness. fullness. Mm -hmm. Yes ma'am. Okay. And uh, her per speculum, vault was healthy. Local examination, we asked. We saw there's no demonstrable SUI. And uh, PV, no significant With findings. With that full bladder also, she did not leak. She did not leak. Okay. No ma'am, she did not leak. Otherwise, with voiding dysfunction, it, it's this often associated with the... Uh, uh, SUI dribbling of SUI. urine. Yes, but she did not. She did not leak. And PV, there were no significant findings. Walt was uh, healthy. Walt was fine. Uh, we even did the anal wink and the clitoral reflex, which was normal. There was the contraction of the of the anal uh, mucosa. I mean, sorry, the, the anal ring. Yes, the anal sphincter. There was contraction of the anal sphincter, and there was a clitoral reflex. Okay. And did you check the sensation also? She could feel the sensation all around that perineum. Uh, okay. I did not so yes. so um, when we do a neurological examination, two things are important, sensory right. and motor. motor yes, so when we are checking uh, the reflexes, we are checking the motor, motor component yes, and sensory means we are just checking the 
don't pinch and prick her. Just right. ask that whether because it is a very sensitive area. Right. Just ask whether she can feel the sensation. The sensation. There or not. Yes, okay. yes. So one of the because we are talking about this, we I had some of the patients, old women, who came with recurrent UTI, and when we did this uh, examination, sens sensory examination of local area. They could not feel anything okay. and what was actually happening because they were having um, a fecal uh, incontinence okay. and that fecal material because they were not having any sensation, motor loss was there, right. sensory loss was there, they were getting in, infecting the bladder again right. and again. So, so that can be the cause of cause the recurrent, of recurrent infections. Yes. yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll keep that in mind next mm -hmm. time. Okay. Uh, so ma'am, then we did her uh, bladder scan because we even had the ultrasound machine at her disposal and on uh, the bladder scan we saw the post void residue was 575 ml. 575 ml. Around 600. Yes. And what is the normal Vera? If uh, you have to tell the viewers, uh, what is the normal amount of? Post void post residue. Void. Generally we compare it in terms of percentage of the amount she is voided. Generally the post void residue should be less than 10% of the voided volume. Or on a rough note, if it's less than 50 to 100 ml, if she is passing good amount of urine, for a roughly basis we can take 50 to 100 ml. But if you want to be specific, it should be less than 10% of, of the voided volume. For that you need the voided amount of right. she voided, yes. that also should be measured. So I follow a very simple thing. Yes. So if voided, if post void residue is up to 50 ml, right. very good, happy, okay, right. no problem at all. 50 to 100 means it's okay, it's borderline. Mm -hmm. More than 100, if void, post void residue is there, that is an alarming thing, you have to further investigate right. it. Yeah. And this patient had 600. 600 ml. And the amount of, actually the capacity of bladder itself is? How much? 4 to 500. 400 to 500. Yes. It was even more. Yes. And then one very important question I want to ask you. With that, whether she was able to feel that sensation? Yes, she said she did feel the sensation. But whenever she went to pass urine, it was very, uh, a very weak stream that she would pass. So why I asked you? Because when you did examination, mm -hmm. you said that you could palpate the bladder for abdominally. Right. But she was not having any tendons. Just minimal. Minimal bladder. tendons. Right. So this is very important that if a patient, now you are going to give me the answer of okay. this. Yes. If a patient is having a lot of post void residue in her bladder mm -hmm. and she is not complaining of urgency, 600 ml urine, which right. is more than the normal capacity. Right. What is the straightforward diagnosis? Detrusor underactivity. Detrusor underactivity or hypoactive or underactive bladder. Right. That means bladder is has become lazy. It is not contracting only so patient is not passing and it is so lazy that even that fullness ka sensation it is not it's giving not to the brain. It. Okay. Okay. Yes. So it is a detrusor underactivity. Detrusor underactivity is a very newly understood terminology. Mm -hmm. I think in 2014, 2016 only okay. this terminology was so much studied. People did right. not know about it. As we always say that urogynecology is a new subspeciality. We are every year we are still discovering things. Right. But it is a very, very important and I have seen it quite frequently in our OPDs okay. that uh, hypoactive bladder is an entity and can give rise to voiding dysfunctions. And even sometimes patient can come with incontinence also. Mm -hmm. It is very important to find out that. Right. Okay. Yes. So my diagnosis is now patient has complained. What is the age of patient? Ma'am, she's 55. 55 right. years old. Hysterectomy is already being yes. done for her 10 right. years ago. And now she presents with some kind of voiding void dysfunction. dysfunction. One more thing, voiding dysfunction suddenly, sudden onset. Patient is saying that it is sudden onset. Mm -hmm. This is again, we yes. did something for that. Yes. So we have to take little history in detail because Sudden onset voiding dysfunction is little rare. Right. I tell always, even if it is because of cystocele or some organic lesion, they increase in size little slowly. Right. Okay. If uterus would have been there, we would also have thought of fibroids. fibroids yes. But all these will not develop suddenly. Hmm. Okay. So it is a very um, atypical case of acute voiding dysfunction. dysfunction. Yes. Okay. So what can be the causes of acute voiding dysfunction? What is the important thing? You will go back and ask in her history. Right. Ma'am, we did check with her whether she had any history of acute injury, any trauma to the spine. 
or uh, any uh, any history of a CVA of a cerebrovascular accident. Yes. She did not give any history of uh, of any such uh, yes, yes event. Yes. So very important basically are the neurological causes. Neurological causes of hypoactive bladder or neurogenic bladder mm -hmm. can suddenly start. Right. Those causes can be, as you said, it can be a uh, like tumor right. which is space occupying lesion yes. in the brain or spinal, spinal cord, cord or it can also be a trauma and according to my experience trauma is much more common okay, mm, okay. because women will fall in this age and they will not realize also right. I always tell one story of our own mm. Akka yes. whose Akka means the worker who works in our hospital she brought her elder sister who was um, like physically, not mentally, little, uh, not, not really, stable. Yeah, yes. stable. So she fell in bathroom, mm -hmm. okay, and she never told anybody. Mm -hmm. And after that, she had retention of urine and the blood dribbling. Okay. okay. When she came to hospital, everybody put uh, catheter and all. Nobody bothered to take because she was not talking also very right. properly. And this girl did not know what has gone. But then, because it was very difficult to uh, take the history from her. So we did her, we sent her for a neurology examination mm -hmm. and for orthopedics and there was a crack in her vertebra. Oh. Okay, and that, that was impinging into the, the nerve the, no. and okay. that was, and because it was acute trauma, right. so orthopedic people uh, in spine unit, they immediately fixed it and patient became all right. Oh. For yeah. five, seven days she suffered because people could not diagnose, this. she went to some right. hospital, they just put a catheter for how long she can take the right. catheter. Yes. So this is something similar like that. Yes. This yeah, patient also is presenting with some voiding, voiding dysfunction, dysfunction with full bladder. Right. Okay, it can be a neurogenic yes. cause. An acute history, most mm. important. Yes. So what did you do to rule out that? Did you take some extra history? Yes. And patient will not tell most of the time. So you have to ask her. Right. And we did take an, uh, an orthopedic consult and a neurologist. Before that, she told something. Yes, ma'am. She did say uh, that... Specifically, uh, 10 times you have to ask her any history of trauma, any history of trauma. Yes. Then she came up with one She history. said that she had a fight at her uh, home. So, that's why we suspected if there's any... Uh, injury. If there's any and injury... And that, that procedure this event. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. She did give that history, history, but later she denied the history. So we weren't sure if she was uh, trying to hide something. But then, when, so that's why we did a neurological and uh, orthopedic Orthopedic. consult. But uh, but uh, that did not reveal anything. anything. So yes. so that is again if this case also shows the importance of though history sudden onset everything was going in favor of a uh, and when she told history mm -hmm. also of a fight at home domestic violence kind of history, we thought that it might be some. Um, spinal cord injury right. or something but you see examination she had all reflexes and all sensations intact. Yes, yes. So that was something which was against, against that. it. Yes. So it's very important to find out the cause of the vo of voiding dysfunction. Yes. Yes. And at least check because that supported our diagnosis. Mm. We were a little in confusion. Is there any injury? Is there any injury? But clinical examination before you give consultation that was so important Absolutely. that all her sensations and motor functions Absolutely. were intact. Yes ma'am. So we could not find the reason. Right. So now it is a kind of idiopathic voiding dysfunction. Right. Would you like to classify uh, the causes right. of tell uh, right. about voiding dysfunction? Mm. And voiding dysfunction, the, it, the causes can be either uh, uh, primary or secondary and they can be either neurogenic or myogenic. So first we decide that there are two functions of lower. How yes. urine comes mixed. During maturation, bladder has to contract, right. urethra has, has to, to relax. relax. So the cause can be in the bladder. Right. Like yes, it looks like in this patient. Mm -hmm. Where bladder is filling, but bladder is not in its senses to appreciate that fullness. Right. Okay. Yes. So that is called detrusive underactivity, underactivity or DU. Mm -hmm. Or it can be at the level of urethra. Urethra. Yes. Urethra. Yes. What is it called? Bladder outflow bladder obstruction. Bladder outflow obstruction. So that is yes. boo. boo. Yes, okay. DU and boo. boo. Okay, so now how do you, can you classify the causes of detrusive underactivity? Yes, ma'am, they can be detrusive underactivity, underactivity can be either neurogenic or it can even be myogenic. Uh, first is, uh, th that would be secondary causes. First one would be idiopathic. Under, under neurogenic and myogenic, neurogenic can be if there is any, uh, if there's any spinal cord tumor, if there has been any CVA cerebrovascular accident, if there is any, um, 
uh, diabetic neuropathy and um, so how most important thing to understand is when we say neurogenic and myogenic Yes. One important thing, neurogenic means the reason can be anywhere from head to the spinal cord. Right. Yes, okay? But when we say myogenic, hmm. we are not talking about all muscles, muscles of the body. We are just true, talking about the true cell. Yes. So the cause can be anywhere. Right. Anything. Mm -hmm. So there can be a tumor, there can be a space occupying lesion, there yes. can be a peripheral neuropathy, yes. there can be, um, what do you call, an AV malformation. Mm -hmm. All these problems can be wherever, or it can be a degenerative disease of nerves, it right. can be a disc, it can be a vertebral trauma. All those things which come into your mind, starting from head, head to spinal to cord, yes. can lead to neurogenic causes. Right. But when we say myogenic causes, myogenic causes are only with the with the muscle. Muscle. Yes. So these are the causes in mm -hmm. bladder. Right. What can be the other causes? Bladder outflow obstruction? Uh, Ma'am, they can be either anatomical or they can be functional. Yes. Anatomical if something is pressing upon the urethra mm -hmm. due to a fibroid or due to prolapse. Okay, so fibroid is ruled yes. out in this no patient fibroid. because it's strictly yes. is done, but it can still be an ovarian tumor. Yes, any any, uh, any, any abdominal mass, mass any abdominal pelvic mass, sorry, yes. any pelvic mass uh, mm -hmm. impinging upon the urethra. And I thought of one more actually first when you started presenting mm -hmm. or when I saw the patient first. I expected something. Because patient is having, though the history was short, right. in that condition history won't be short, but what else can be there? She has undergone hysterectomy and now she's... Any um, urethral... urethral cystocele? Cystocele, yes. Cystocele or wall prolapse. Okay. Or wall prolapse but yeah. wall prolapse, history or cystocele history as always we say it is a slow process. Right. The history takes time right. and then more importantly that patient will, if you ask a patient this, say that no morning when I get up it's fine but right. with the uh, past passage of the day it increases so yes. that kind of symptom was not there but on examination also you confirmed that there was yes, no cystocele. Yes there was no cystocele yes ma'am or there was uh, there's even we ruled out a urethral diverticulum as you said we can oh. run our finger under the urethra mm -hmm. and feel if there's any urethritis or any swelling there. Yes. Okay. That, that was also true. ruled out yes. So we could not find a cause which was anatomical, mm -hmm. we could not find a detectable cause whether it is myogenic. So right. now our diagnosis is either idiopathic or some muscle related problem, right. pelvic floor muscle related problem. So how do you want to manage this patient? Right. So ma'am, we admitted the patient and since Any investigations you want to do? We did basic investigations first. We sent her, uh, we sent the routine blood investigation, we did a CBC. We, uh, we sent a urine routine because a lot, uh, a lot of the times infection can be the cause and effect yes. of uh, avoiding dysfunction. Mm -hmm. Her urine routine did show pus cells and bacteria and we also sent it for a culture. Mm -hmm. And the next investigation which we did for her was Culture, a, what was the report, Tira? Ma'am, no growth. No growth. But so no. she was culture negative. Yes. Okay. So patient was actually not. Many times when you do urine microscopy, because of some vaginal discharge, discharge, because of contamination, it might show some pus cells or some bacteria also. Right. But if you are thinking of something else, always confirm it with urine culture. Urine culture. Mm -hmm. Because if it would have been a simple UTI, we could have just given antibiotics. Mm -hmm. But patient was actually having um, voiding dysfunction with 500 ml of urine. You right. cannot just give her antibiotic and send her send because her she will be lost to follow. Yes. Okay, so it was important to evaluate her properly. Yes. Uh, we Actually, if we don't treat, one okay. question here. Yes, this 500 600 ml of urine is there. Right. Voiding dysfunction is okay. She is trouble, but at least she is not having pain. Right. If you don't treat her now, right. what can be the uh, bad effect of this kind of thing? She can go into uh, APBO, acute prolonged bladder over distension. That may be she already has. Already gone has, yes. Yeah. Ma'am, uh, uh, if the bladder distends, uh, they give a cut off around 600, 700, but if it goes more than one liter, there can be permanent damage to the uh, the bladder muscle and it that will take much it longer to recover. And it will never recover. recover Once yes, it's yes. distanced so much, then the healing will be with fibrous tissue. Right. And the bladder will never be normal recover. again. Yes. But anything right. else, if it distance, distance, distance. Right. Where will, now from down it is not able it to come properly. Fun. It will abdominal. go? Abdominal. Uh, abdominal. Where will it go? Urine. No. 
Oh, ma'am, uh, back flow, back that, pressure, and hydronephrosis. Yes. Yeah. So it, it will start going pressure. retrograde yes. towards right. the ureters and mm -hmm. towards the kidneys, kidneys and okay. kidneys will develop hydronephrosis yeah, which true. might later become pyelonephritis, pyelonephritis. and patient yes. can be really sick with pyelonephritis and right. yes, okay that's why it is very important when the uh, this residual urine is so much you have to treat it you cannot make sometimes if you cannot do it maybe you can you might have to do catheterization right. for her yes, that yes. is first what do we prefer what kind of catheterization we prefer uh, if we know we are going to keep the catheter for keep the long... catheter or can we educate the patient of some kind of catheter um, for a clean intermittent clean catheterization, intermittent catheterization. Yes, right. yes. okay that's the safest way if your patient can understand clean intermittent self catheterization yes. is the be best way to do it okay right. yes, but yes. other than that what else before doing this mm -hmm. can you do something can you give a trial of something Ma'am, we gave her a trial of oh, you, did, you did some other investigation also for her? Right. We did a uroflometry for her to know her stream and the amount of urine she is passing. Mm -hmm. And so that we can measure exactly the voided volume and the post-void residue. And um, this is the uroflometry which we had done for her. And here we can see in a in a normal uroflow in a your normal uroflometry graph the graph has to be a re regular bell shaped graph but here we can see it's a very irregular graph like a staccato pattern so each time we're seeing that she voids and then she's again she has to uh, strain to pass some more urine then she's again straining a little more to pass urine and we can see that in the graph in the measurements finally we see that the voided volume was 160 ml that is Okay, but if we see the post void residue is 125 ml. As discussed earlier, we had seen that um, the normal post void residue would be ideally less than 10% of what is voided, but this is almost 75% of what she is voided. So it's definitely a very high post void residue volume. Her maximum flow rate is 8.9. A normal flow rate would be 15 to 18. So we can see even her uh, the flow rate is very slow. That it, it's it's a slow uh, slow stream. And it's a very weak stream. Yes, ma'am. And the voided time that she has taken is for uh, 160 ml is 57 seconds. Generally, for 160 ml, the amount of time it taken is around 15 to 20 seconds. So even the time she's taken to void this has been is increased. Okay, so in these kind of uh, that's what we always teach that usually urodynamics might not be required in every case who present to urogynecology clinic. But in certain situations, when the patient is complaining of voiding this function, right. then urophlometry is really of help to understand because maybe sometimes patient cannot explain it properly. Right. So we can read the graph and tell. And it is totally non-invasive test. Absolutely, Even yes. if patient is having some doubt of infection, you can do it. You are right. not putting anything. anything she yes. just have to sit in a chair and you give her right. privacy and then she will avoid it. Yes. Uh, urine on the basin which has a uh, motor um, running below. Yes. Yes. So, okay. This gives so us this more thing. an objective assessment and that yes. will be more subjective based on when the When we are taking this stream. Yes. Correct. Okay, so we for sure now we know that patient is having difficulty mm -hmm. in voiding yes. and she's having a lot of post void residue. Yes, we know we have ruled out all treatable causes, treatable so causes. it is some kind of idiopathic problem right. which needs treatment. Yes. There are so many choices, but we have to do whatever available right. is available to us. So the last resort, if nothing works, we'll do clean intermittent self-catheterization yes. will teach her. So, um, so Dheera, tell me what did yes. you do for this patient right. and did the patient improve with your treatment? Yes. And we started on tablet bethanicol 25 mg. So tablet yes. bethanicol, what is tablet bethanicol? It's a cholinergic drug which will cause the detrusor to contract yes. so that it can help So usually the there. drugs which we use are anticholinergic mode right. in the treatment of uh, urge urge incontinence, incontinence, where yes. the bladder is very angry and needs to be relaxed. Right. Here where the bladder has become lazy, you have to push it. Push it so yes. you use cholinergic, cholinergic drugs. Drug. So what drug? It is called bethanicol. And what is the dose? Um, 25 milligram twice a day. Mm -hmm. And uh, we we started it and uh, we saw that within three days she had definite improvement on discharge. We discharged her on day four. Uh, when she went, her post void residue was 30% of the voided. Earlier it was 75%. So there was definite relief even uh, Symptomatically, she said that she's passing urine better. She doesn't uh, 
the incomplete sensation which she had earlier is much lesser. So one thing we did uh, within the call, yes. that is the medical management part yes, of it. Did we do any other thing for this Dheera? Yes, ma'am. We um, we gave we taught her the pelvic floor muscle uh, training. Sure. Then how to relax her muscles. So how pelvic to floor muscle training is not just Kegels. This also yes. I want all of you to understand. So it is much more than Kegels. It is assessment of muscles and then training them accordingly. Right. So uh, how did uh, we do with the help of our physiotherapist? We yes. taught them how to uh, use the pelvic floor muscles. How she, how to relax. How to breathe and the abdominal breathing, the, th uh, yes. the thoracic breathing and how to relax the muscles while voiding. Yeah. Yes, we always have this misconception that it's only for SUI or yeah. urge yeah. but even voiding dysfunction can, can be treated. treated with and here yeah. relaxation of muscles help and if some muscles have become like totally loose and lax and not active, those muscles can be contracted. So a proper right. assessment with the trained physiotherapist mm -hmm. which luckily we have right so yes. that really helps and then positions what happens sometimes usually when you have undergone a surgery if the patient mm -hmm. has undergone a surgery before it can be simple hysterectomy right. also okay the anatomy changes the excess is very important that right. changes sometimes so just changing the posture usually mm -hmm. uh, when we pass urine we have to bend a little forward right. to aid it but sometimes patients need little backward bending, bending, which they do okay. not understand. Putting a stool below their um, foot, the feet, okay, yes. so that the body is little relaxed. Right. So all these little bit modification really help to patient. You don't have to keep every patient with catheter. I have seen so many women, not so many, but many women right. who had been for uh, catheter for such a long time. I think if we just take little early action hmm. and yes, teach them properly these problems are not that bad very bothersome for the patient but if you can detect it early and it will be very bad on our part if they are presenting in 10 days right in such yes, short history patient has presented she yes. has she was so much aware that she knew that she is having but some problem having if we are not treating it then it will be like really bad right. in that part yes, so this way it was a very interesting case right. i want read out to now we have confused you so much so many things we discussed right. i want point by point read out to summarize this case to us right she's a 55 year old lady um, undergo a post hysterectomy. Uh, she is a homemaker. She came with complaints of increased frequency of micturition and incomplete uh, evacuation of bladder. She also gave history of uh, straining to while voiding urine. Otherwise, she had no significant past history, uh, no significant um, comorbidities. Uh, comorbidities, medical comorbidities. On examination, uh, what stood out uh, important was on poor abdomen, which she had suprapubic fullness and minimal tenderness on palpation. Otherwise, her CNS was normal, which is also very important to examine. On investigations, uh, yes, go after the urine routine, we did the uroflowmetry, which gave which uh, gave us additional points to confirm that there was a widening dysfunction. What the points were, there were it was not a regular bell-shaped curve; it was an irregular curve. Her post void residue was 75% of the voided volume. The maximum flow rate was, was half of the normal rate. And also the, the entire, the voiding time was, uh, was almost double of what, what, of what you would take for that much amount of urine. So simple formula, if she's voiding 160 ml, it should be around 16 seconds. Right. Okay. So you yes, can right. remember like that in seconds, whatever uh, right. ml she has to. Right. Like 160 to void 160 ml, she should take 16 seconds. Right, yes. And she took around 57, 60 57 seconds. seconds yes. Okay, three, four times, times more time more. to empty that small amount of Right. Milk. But this Eurodynamics was reliable, Euroflowmetry rather was reliable, because at least to say it is a reliable, to read the graph at least, patient should void around 100 ml of urine. Right. And she voided 160. Right. If she voids only 50, then you cannot read, even read hmm. that. It is not reliable. Then you just say that. Uh, it is not important, maybe next time you have to right. read it, but 160 ml is an okay amount to read the graph. Right, yes. What I would say the takeaway message from this would be, yes, we would make a diagnosis of voiding dysfunction, but more than that is important that, uh, that we rule out the important causes of voiding dysfunction. So it's always important to rule out the causes. And once we rule out the causes, if we know that it's idiopathic, we can treat them with a cholinergic drug and pelvic flow muscle sure. training. And it works. And yes, it did. It yes. works. Okay, I think with this uh, short and sweet case and a 
happy ending. Um, thank you so much. Keep watching. Yes. Okay. So thank bye you. For now. Thank bye you. Bye. bye.